The Rope Tornado The rope tornado is one of the most common shapes seen in weaker storms or during the dying stage of a stronger tornado. It's long, thin, and snake-like, stretching from the storm cloud to the ground in a narrow funnel. Rope tornadoes look less intimidating than other types, but they can still cause serious damage, especially if they pass directly over a vulnerable area. Many tornadoes begin as rope shapes before strengthening. Their slim profile is a sign that the circulation is compact and less organized. However, appearances can be misleading. Even a rope tornado can pack winds over 100 miles per hour. In fact, some of the deadliest tornadoes have ended their life cycles in rope form, still tearing apart anything in their path. Because they're thinner, rope tornadoes are also harder to spot from a distance, which makes them particularly dangerous for drivers and farmers out in open country. They may look fragile, but the rope tornado is a reminder that size doesn't always equal safety. The Cone Tornado The cone tornado is what most people picture when they think of a classic twister. It's wider at the top, where it connects to the storm cloud, and narrows as it touches the ground, forming a clear cone shape. Cone tornadoes often appear in stronger storms and can range from small to very large in size. Because of their structure, cone tornadoes are often easier to see than rope types. Their wide base makes them look more stable and organized, which often means they're gaining strength. Meteorologists pay close attention when a tornado takes on this shape because it often indicates intensification. Cone tornadoes are capable of EF2 to EF4 strength, meaning they can tear roofs off houses, uproot trees, and toss vehicles like toys. They are also some of the most photographed tornadoes, partly because of their dramatic look. For storm chasers, the cone tornado is both thrilling and terrifying, a clear sign that nature's fury is fully on display. The Wedge Tornado the wedge tornado is the monster of the tornado world. Unlike ropes or cones, wedges are wider than they are tall, often covering a mile or more across the ground. From a distance, they can look like a dark wall of cloud rather than a funnel, which makes them incredibly difficult to distinguish from heavy rain or the storm's base. Wedge tornadoes are usually associated with the most violent EF4 and EF5 storms. Their sheer size allows them to sustain enormous wind speeds and cause catastrophic destruction across wide paths. Famous examples include the 2013 El Reno tornado in Oklahoma, which was nearly 2.6 miles wide, making it the largest tornado ever recorded. Communities hit by wedges often see entire neighborhoods leveled, infrastructure wiped out, and landscapes permanently altered. These tornadoes are so powerful they can change maps, carving scars visible from satellites. If you ever hear meteorologists mention a wedge, it's a signal to take cover immediately. They are the most feared tornado type for good reason. Nothing matches their combination of size, strength, and unpredictability. The Stovepipe Tornado The Stovepipe Tornado is one of the cleanest, most striking tornado shapes. It gets its name because it looks like a giant stovepipe extending straight down from the cloud to the ground. Unlike the cone, the stovepipe's sides are nearly vertical, making it appear like a tall cylinder. This shape often forms when a tornado is fully mature and the rotation is steady. Stovepipes can range in size but are usually medium to large in width, making them more dangerous than ropes. Because of their clean outline, they are easier to identify from a distance, even in poor visibility conditions. While stovepipe tornadoes look almost symmetrical, there is nothing balanced about their power. Many stovepipes reach EF3 or stronger intensity, capable of flattening houses and tossing heavy vehicles. For storm chasers and researchers, the stovepipe is one of the most photographed forms, simply because it is so visually dramatic. When you see a stovepipe tornado, you are usually looking at a storm that has stabilized its rotation and is unleashing significant, organized strength. The Multi-Vortex Tornado A multi-vortex tornado is both fascinating and terrifying. Instead of a single funnel, this type of tornado has two or more smaller subvortices spinning around a common center. To the untrained eye, it might look like one large chaotic funnel. But up close, you can often see multiple narrow funnels orbiting inside the main circulation. These subvortices are where the most intense winds occur. In fact, they can create localized damage patterns that are much worse than the rest of the tornado. 
A neighborhood hit by a multi-vortex tornado might show houses completely leveled right next to homes with only minor damage. Multi-vortex structures are common in the strongest tornadoes, especially EF4 and EF5 events. The 2011 Joplin tornado, one of the deadliest in U.S. history, displayed clear multi-vortex behavior. For meteorologists, spotting these formations on radar or in video footage is a red flag for extreme danger. The multi-vortex tornado is a reminder that tornadoes aren't uniform. Their power can be concentrated in unpredictable swirls, making them some of the deadliest storms on Earth. The satellite tornado satellite tornadoes are smaller funnels that orbit around a larger primary tornado. They aren't connected directly to the main funnel but are part of the same storm system, spinning nearby like moons around a planet. While usually weaker than the main tornado, satellites can still cause serious damage, especially because they strike unexpectedly. These tornadoes form when multiple areas of rotation develop in a powerful supercell thunderstorm. The main tornado dominates the storm structure, but smaller circulations nearby can tighten into their own funnels. For people on the ground, this means danger doesn't just come from the obvious large tornado, but from smaller ones appearing suddenly. One famous example occurred during the 2013 El Reno tornado, when multiple satellite tornadoes orbited the giant wedge. Storm chasers caught dramatic footage of small funnels wrapping around the larger beast. Satellite tornadoes make warning systems even more difficult. While attention is focused on the massive main funnel, a satellite can strike from the side, doubling the threat. Their unpredictable behavior makes them one of the most unnerving tornado phenomena, the landspout tornado. The landspout tornado looks similar to a waterspout, except it forms over land. Unlike classic supercell tornadoes, landspouts don't form from strong, rotating mesocyclones inside thunderstorms. Instead, they develop when small circulations at the surface stretch upward into a growing cloud. This makes them structurally weaker but still capable of producing EF0 to EF2 damage. Landspouts often appear skinny, rope-like, and less organized than cone or stovepipe tornadoes. They can form quickly and without the radar signatures that meteorologists usually rely on, making them harder to predict. Because they form in non-supercell storms, they often surprise people who aren't expecting severe weather. Despite being weaker, landspouts can still be destructive. They've been known to rip roofs from barns, toss vehicles, and injure people caught off guard. Farmers in the Midwest often see them forming on hot summer afternoons when small storms bubble up. What makes landspouts interesting is their formation mechanism. They show that tornadoes don't always require the massive power of a supercell. Even a modest thunderstorm can twist the atmosphere enough to create a funnel. 